<laughs> just punch. How does that affect him? We fought more than two of these things. I think it's just a punch of curtain. Everything else just apparently died. I wonder where she did go. I know you made it. Always the worst timing. Let's go. You really are everywhere, huh? I wonder how many are behind me.
Oh, another minute. Okay. And away we go. You seen T Shaw? <laughs> that made him jump. <laughs> a girl with a crossbow. Oh, I haven't seen anyone. The doctor? Dead. Yeah. Goodbye. Again? Wait, wait. It's what I deserve. But this time, there's another way. I got a one shot cure from the lab. It was meant for me, but. I don't need it. Sam does. <sighs> Not his head, you idiot. Hmm. Ay, puta. My bad. I'm starving. Got any of that pastrami? Perfect. Hey. I gotta get going. You guys go. There's a girl out there. She's the cure. She could really use a friend. Go save the world. Thanks, man. Thank you. We won't waste this. Pretty sure you won't. Good, Good luck. luck. <laughs> Oh, so I'm gonna die in a fireball of death. Tisha. That the only reason. You know, but now that scream would have gone on one. Dead Island 2. And let the credits roll. Wow, wow. Is it the longest game in the world? No. Not really. Does it have a bunch of stuff to do? Yes. If if you're going round trying to get absolutely everything done, it'll take you a long time. If if you're just running through the story from start to finish, hmm, maybe about ten hours tops. On the slow side. But yeah, it's not it's not a massively long story. You level fairly quickly through it and it's it's not the worst story, but it's it's a decent story to be fair. For Dead Island. 
I mean, they can't really, you can't really say much about a story about zombies. And if I remember rightly, it did get passed around like five different studios. So yeah, not majorly bad. I'm glad that they got rid of the the thing that they initially teased where it was use your ability and it's a one hit KO on summit. That was just stupid. That was an idiotic idea. I'm glad that in, in it. I'm glad it's gone back to more of a duration based rage mode. It's it's good. I do wish that they use weapons in it, like what you've specialised in, but eh, that's neither here nor there. So, for example, there's no really weapon specialisation. I know in Dead Island 1 you had the blunt expert, the throwing expert, the the arms expert, and the sharp weapon expert. And when you went into rage mode, you had the ability associated with that. It's like the throwing expert got like little throwing knives. I think he got throwing knives, I never really played him. And I think Sammy B got like his knuckle dusters out. Which, cool. And it sort of suited what the war. And they had skill trees associated to that sort of thing. So you could play a blunt expert with massive amount of health and just charge in. Or you could play the throwing weapons expert and just have a chance to throw your weapon and instantly get it back. I don't, I don't get why they took that out to be fair, the skill trees weren't bad, but the card systems, uh, I'm not the biggest fan, but it is a good idea and concept. The only problem I find of it is there isn't enough of them, or there isn't a wider vari wide variety of them. It's trying to sort of force you into the gameplay style of either blocking or jump kicking or using frenzy it's there's no cards specializing around certain weapon types so if I were to use a sledgehammer it's no different from then using a machete the only difference is the machete can cut off what cut off arms and legs where the sledgehammer don't. So there's no real point in using the sledgehammer. It just never made sense to me. It didn't make it don't make sense that they've done that. They've de incentivized using different weapons. I like the fact that you can level your weapon up with you, so if you find a weapon that you like, you can just go, okay, I'm going to use this weapon throughout the game. But, it's... It's kind of pointless when you get so many different weapons, and you can get a, such a variety, that you can choose any weapon at any point in the game, and you get an upgrade for it later. The only reason you'd actually upgrade a weapon now is if you get a legendary weapon. That is literally the only reason I can see for that I, that I can see for um upgrading a weapon is if it's a legendary one. Other than that, there's I don't see a point in it. I 
don't know whether that's just me or whether that might be a general consensus. But there's no real point to upgrading the weapons other than legendaries. And named weapons are annoying. Because other than the legendary ones, you can't sell them and you can't dismantle them. So, you've got this weapon that's under leveled, kind of useless, and is purple or lower. Why? If it's a named weapon, make it a different colour to a legendary. So you've got purple, you've got grey, you've got you've basically got dark grey, light, light grey, which are two different types. So you've got common and uncommon. Uh, blue, green, blue, purple, orange. Green is uh, less uncommon. Purple is blue is rare. Purple is very rare, and then Flumin Orange is legendary. Make named weapons something different. So, so put it somewhere in between, like legendary. So put it like on the scale of legendary, but different. So it's worth having, rather than having to throw it on the floor and get rid of it. Because I'm sorry, I'm not going to be carrying around a blue weapon that's substandard to an orange weapon that is at the same level with the same modifications on this. So I can have two blooming sledgehammers that has the same modifications on it, but the legendary one's better with the same level. It doesn't make sense. I don't know whether that's just me either, because I know legendaries do tend to have two passive perks and then two slots for normal perks, and purples have one passive and three slottable. But to be fair, I do struggle to find a third slottable for the for the um, purples. I do tend to find uh, very, find it very awkward to think of a third slottable perk for the purples. Whereas with the oranges, the the perks are like oh, and I only need two because the other two the two perks are cho two passives are chosen for me, and the very good the usually very good passive perks, and then your your two chosen perks usually complement the two passive ones, whereas your purple one is a standard passive one of increased force, increased stability, and something like that. Where it's like okay, it's increased. It's increased the it's increased the force of the weapon. One, what does that even mean? And two, what do I do with that? Cause none of the stats are explained. It doesn't explain force. Speed is self-explanatory. It's how fast it can attack. Um, durability is obviously how long, how many, how long it'll last. But what's the difference between force and impact? Is force how fast you can swing it? Is impact how hard it hits? But then, what's the point in saying the damage? What's the point in having a damage number equipped to it? Is the damage number calculated by the force and the impact or what? It, it doesn't make sense. Again, I don't know whether that's just me, but it's kind of one of those two things is redundant. Or one of those three things redundant. Either the power number, the force, or the impact. One, one of those things is kind of redundant for me. It 
If you're going to get rid of the power number, then that's kind of redundant to give the weapons to the people. Because they'll have to go out and experiment with what weapon's better or not. Or at least make it the level of the weapon. So, the the make the le level of the weapons the main point. So it's level, say the, level, the weapon's level 22. The level 22 weapon you can level up with, and it'll increase the force and impact. But there's no point in giving it the power number if the power don't mean anything. And the force and impact can determine how fast the, the attack speed or the uh, sh tells you how fast you can swing it. The force will tell you how hard, if it has a chance of knocking them back, and the impact is how much damage it does on the on the hit. That makes sense. When you've got something like force, impact, and power, there's no point. There's no point in having all three. And and tell people what they do. Please, developers, put in your game somewhere that explains what the stats are. Because when I was picking my character, I had no idea what the difference was between toughness, resilience, agility, all that sort of thing. I have no idea what the difference is between all that. Because there was no way of explaining it. If resilience is how much elemental damage you can take, then put that somewhere. Like, just in a little writing underneath it, where to start, put, put elemental damage reduction. Toughness. For example, physical damage reduction. Or physical and range of damage reduction. I don't, I don't, don't get me wrong, I agree that you wanted, you probably wanted a clean looking menu. But having a clean looking menu and something easily readable is different. I have no idea what any of the stats meant. I just picked someone who I thought looked good and had decent stats. I had no idea what they meant and I still don't to be, to be fair. But... It, it kind of threw me off when it was like resistance 2 health pack 1 toughness 3 it's like what do any of these mean is this meant to be good is this bad is this a good character is this a bad character what what am i, what am I picking here it doesn't make sense what am i building this character for There's no, there's no point in telling your people, oh, this character has five stars of toughness, three, two stars of speed, and three stars in health pack. If they don't, that don't mean anything to them. If these words don't associate to something, there's no point in putting them there. Please make it simpler. I'll make it so that there's annotation to what it does. So, for example, tough, like I said, toughness, physical and ranged damage reduction underneath it. So that people know that toughness reduces the damage of physical and ranged damage. So then they can build around that where they run in and attack people. Uh, agility increases stamina regeneration so they can keep on doing heavy attacks let them build around that don't just 
pop the words in and hope that they understand what it means. I don't know if there's any of this I've reached you guys, but, you know, if it does, yay. If not, oh well. If you're wondering why I'm sitting through the entirety of the um, end credits, it's mostly because sometimes, not very often, but fair very rarely they put something on the end of the credits that if you skip the credits you skip that bit and I don't know why anyway yeah that's that's my little rant on Dead Island 2 good game some good decisions, some bad decisions. Uh, Star is about average. Makes sense for what it is. Sammy B getting infected didn't make sense, to be fair, but that's in my opinion, because it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a different infection to what was on the other two islands. Because they did get transported back. So it, it doesn't make sense at all. Hey, Dead Island 2.